All right, today we have a 2005, it's a BMW 3 Series. Uh, what we're going to be doing is replacing the lower control arms and the lower control arm bushings on it. Uh, they're both really common problems on these vehicles. Um, the, the front end makes all kinds of clunking noises. Um, the, you can see even when I kick the tire, you can see the, the wheel going back and forth, and that's due to the, uh, the slop in the front end components. So we'll show you a little bit more once it's up in the air. But we got our parts from Auto Parts Direct to you and um, some nice new control arms and control arm bushings. We're going to show you how to install them. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get it up in the air and uh, we'll meet you underneath the car. All right, so we're underneath the car now. First thing we're going to do is remove the two skip plates. Um, normally on these cars, there's also another one here for the oil filter access, but somebody took it off and never put it back on. So um, just making a note that that's not there. Um, the front one here is held in just by these Phillips uh, they're not really screws, they're more like a pin. You just turn them counterclockwise and they'll just kind of fall out. They'll, they'll hold themselves in. So you just go around and disconnect all these Phillips guys. And then this whole front shield will just kind of fall down and slide off. So we'll put that out of our way. And next we're going to remove this next shield so we can see everything up under here. Um, there are a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen millimeter bolts on here. So I've got my uh, impact wrench. I'm just going to zip these off real quick and then take this shield down. All right, so here we can see the old control arm, and this is the bushing that we'll be, be changing as well. Um, the problem with the control arm is the ball joint over on the end by the wheel is no good. This uh, ball joint is actually integrated into the control arm, so to change it, you have to change the control arm. Um, you can see when I shake the wheel, you can see the play in that ball joint. I can't see it as well that way, but, but yeah, that makes all kinds of racket when driving down the road. And these um, bushings are notorious for going bad, too. That one, when you're going down the road, it'll allow the wheel to shift front and back, too. So we're just going to go ahead and change all these. So I'm going to get my tools ready for that. All right, first thing I'm going to do is take off this um, bushing bracket here for the back bushing. Um, my impact wrench died halfway through taking off that skid shield. I don't know if you saw it in fast forward, but it uh, started running on its own, so it needs a new valve. Anyway, we're going to use my uh, air ratchet instead. These are 16 millimeter bolts. Just break them loose and just go ahead and take them out all the way. Okay. Now at this point, you can just drop that down. Now, um, a lot of people don't need the control arms when their ball joints are still okay. If you're doing just these bushings, an old trick I used to do, you can take, this bushing still got a little bit intact in there, but you can twist it and wiggle it and work it off of here. I'm not gonna bother doing the whole thing because we're not actually keeping the old control arm. But anyways, if you're doing just the bushing, you just wiggle it off the end of that control arm, then you just slide the new bushing on, and that's all you do. But we're gonna go ahead and change the whole thing. So I'll just leave it hanging on there. Now, up here is a 21 millimeter nut. It goes through the this ball joint, through this uh, K-member frame piece, um, and there's a 21 millimeter nut up there. It can be tough to get to. The way, the way I think the book says to do it is to loosen the motor mounts and actually jack the engine up. Um, but I've always done them by just taking a good open end wrench, and you can usually get that right on, 
the nut. You're not going to be able to see it because it's so tight in there. But I'm just going to get this right on the nut and hopefully it will break loose. She's on there. All right, it moved the notch. Now, the not so fun part about this is you can only loosen this nut a little tiny tick at a time. And because I can't fit a socket on there, there's no way to ratchet it, so you have to use this open end wrench unless you opt for taking the motor mount out, which I'm not going to do unless I have to. All right, so I got the nut off. Um, now what we can do, hopefully the, uh, the ball joint will just pop out when I give it a few whacks with the hammer. Otherwise, I might have to get in here with a pickle fork and uh, loosen this. But I'm just going to try hitting right in this area. And if we're lucky, the ball joint will just come right out. There she goes. So. All right, so here's one of the ball joints. This one is actually still tight, but you have no choice of changing it anyway, because this one's bad over here. So, and I shouldn't have done that yet. I'm gonna put, <laughs> I'll show you why. I'm gonna put one of these, actually, I'm gonna put this guy back in, but not tighten it down or anything, just until I break loose the nut on the top of this ball joint, otherwise the wheel's just going to try to flop around when I go to break it loose. Over here, can you see that? Okay, now this nut up here for the top of the ball joint is an 18 millimeter. And again, I've got the, the other ball joint just kind of rest in there so that I have, there we go. So it won't move too much when I go to break this loose. Now this one I can just ratchet off of here. So now, what we can do is we're going to separate this joint and again, I'm going to try the, just hitting it with a hammer method and see if that'll be enough to free it up. If not, we'll have to get a uh, pickle fork in there. But if we hit right here on the knuckle, that'll shock it just enough where it should release its grap grasp on the, the tapered end of that ball joint. So we're just going to real carefully. There it goes. So here, you can see this ball joint was absolutely terrible, destroyed. This one was all right, and this bushing was going bad. You can see all the play in that thing too. So definitely ready for these components. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get our new ones unboxed, and we'll be right back with you. All right, so you can see our new, uh, new control arm here. Line it up to our original, and you can see it looks, everything's just the same. Our new uh, bushing, let's see. They're side dependent, that's the, the wrong side, so. So once that goes on there, that'll be it. So we'll go ahead and install our new control arm now.
We'll do just like we did with the old one. We're going to start with the wheel side here. Oh yeah, let me point out one other thing to you. If the nut starts spinning, it's got a lock nut on it. If the nut starts spinning when you go to tighten it down once it's in there, they put a little hex head in the top of this uh, ball joint stud. What that's for is so that you can hold this stud from spinning while you tighten down this nut. Um, hopefully we won't have to use that because it, it's never fun to do that, but if we have to, it's there. Same with this one. So, just in case you need it, they put that there, which is nice. So go ahead and get this started. And start tightening it down. And apparently they changed the size of the nut on me. Okay. Yeah, it would. All right, our new nut is now 19 millimeter. All right, we'll tighten that a little bit further in a minute. Now we'll slide this uh, this joint back up in its hole, which is right there. And we'll get our nut started on there. I'm going to start snugging it down with pliers. Careful not to strip it, but it just saves time. You don't have to flip the wrench each time. You got to get another bite on it. So. All right, so we got the top nut tight. Um, again, I'm not gonna be able to tighten this one fully until I get that control arm on there, or control arm bushing. Now what we're gonna do here is slide this bushing over the end of this shaft. Sometimes it'll go on just like this. And yeah, that one's gonna be what you might need to do is just add a little bit of uh, spray lubricant in here. Just let it slide over the shaft. It just makes things easier. So I'm going to do that real quick. All right, I used a little bit of silicone-based lubricant. You don't want to use a petroleum lubricant because it'll, it can hurt the rubber on the bush. And, And try tapping it on. You don't want to hammer directly on the bush and I use a piece of wood here to The hand is mightier than the hammer. <sighs> Alright, there it goes. All right, so the hammer doesn't work. Uh, the rubber just absorbs all the shock. Anyways, I just pushed it on my hand. And now we'll put our two bolts back in to hold that in place. Okay, I've been having trouble getting this uh, green light. Yep. Okay, I was having trouble getting this bush and bolts to line up. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Redisconnect this ball joint in the hopes that it will give me enough movement 
Actually, you know what? I'm actually going to re-disconnect, no? Yeah, I'm going to try disconnecting this one and see what happens. Okay, I was fighting with this bush and trying to get this, the bolts lined up here. I ended up disconnecting the uh, ball joint up here again. Broke it free, and that allowed me just enough movement to get the, the bolt started on that control arm bushing. So, long story short, before you tighten down this ball joint all the way, get these bolts started on this bushing. All right, now we're on the passenger side. You can see this ball joint is just as bad, if not worse. And you can imagine what a racket that makes going down the road, hitting bumps. Um, this one's slightly different. It's got a, uh, a little bolt for this uh, ride height sensor thing. Um, it's a little 13 millimeter nut. We'll just take that loose and get this bracket out of our way. I'm going to be careful doing this. You don't want to put tension on this, this rod, so kind of hold it as you're taking it loose. You don't want to break that sensor. Okay. I'll just pull that up out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and put this nut back on there just so I don't lose it. And we'll push that up out of our way. Now, I will do like I did before. Well, I don't remember if I did it in that order before, but I'll take off this uh, nut for the center ball joint. On this side, you can get to it a little easier. You might even be able to see it. All right, we changed the camera angle a little bit. You can see the uh, top of the center uh, ball joint nut now up here. On uh, this side, of the passenger side of the car, we can actually let you see it. So again, now you can see, actually I can get the clothes in on there, oh, almost. See how close the, the clearance is to this motor mount? That's why I have to use that open end of the wrench, because I just can't get a socket or anything down here. And I don't feel like taking the motor mount off, so I'm going to just hit it with this open end of the wrench again. And I'll see if I can get on there with my pliers. And... Okay, so we got our uh, the center ball joint nut loose. We're going to go ahead and break loose this uh, outer ball joint nut. Again, it's an 18 millimeter. We'll take that off. Okay, and now take out our uh, bushings for the control arm again.
and just like we did on the other side, I'm going to hit the uh, knuckle right there with my hammer, and that should be enough to break loose this uh, tapered joint in here. Okay, so I don't know if you saw the hammer method wasn't working, and sorry the camera cut away when we used it, but um, what I ended up using is what's called a pickled fork. Um, if you happen to have one of these with an air hammer, um, it makes life really easy. It's very loud, but it works really well. Um, you can also get these from your local anywhere tool place uh, where it's just this with a long extension on it, and you can hit it with the hammer. Um, so if it comes down to it, what you do is you just put that up in there, and it's made to separate joints. When you put that in there, you, the other one you hit with a hammer, and it just wedges it down. Um, this one is an air hammer, so it does all the hammering for you. So anyway, that's how we ended up separating it. So now I can just go ahead and take it out the rest of the way. And you can see our ball joint is extremely bad on that one too. Yeah, that should be a really tight joint, but nope, that's no good. So, we'll set it up next to our new parts again. Again, we got these from Auto Parts Direct to you. It's our nice new uh, control arm and bushing. Where's our bushing? Here's our new bushing. They all go together just like that. So we'll go ahead and do that. This time, the only difference I'm going to do again is um, I'm not going to tighten down any of the nuts until I get that bushing lined up. I learned that on the other side. So we'll go ahead and just get this one started. All right, so. I'm just going to leave those, not even there, just like that, so we have plenty of room to maneuver it. Now we're going to take our, uh, our new bushing and I'm going to squirt some silicone based lubricant in here again. Now we'll just, I'm not even going to try the hammer this time, just going to push it on by hand. So we'll line it up. Really? Spread some of that lubricant on the arm itself. Try that again. <laughs> okay, all right, well, we'll try the hammer again after all. <laughs> See what happens. All right, so I just put the control arm bushing on backwards. In case you're wondering, see these larger, see how that side has a larger opening than that side? Reason for that, 
they slide over these. It's got these little things that stick out of the frame there, that it slides over. So you got to make sure that the bigger part of that hole is facing towards the, the frame of the car. So let's put that on again. <laughs> facing the right way this time. I wonder if I were to start a bolt here. I could pry against that. Huh? Look at that. That's going. There we go. Yeah. I think that's on enough. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, I think that's it. All right. So, I don't know. Yeah, we recorded that, right? So, I just used this bolt. Stuck it in the frame here, and gave me a spot where I can pry against, pry the bushing on. That works pretty good actually. So, see, hopefully, this, I think that's it. Oh, it's not. <laughs> uh, here we go again. Hmm. Let's see if I can get that bushing on a little bit further. Now, we're going to go ahead and tighten down our ball joint nuts. If you're wondering my, why I put my finger on top there, it's so I can feel the stud to tell if it's spinning while I'm tightening it or not, which is not so far. So. Lastly, tighten down this guy up here. Ah, Alright, it's tight. Now, don't forget to put your ride height sensor back in if you have one. Not all of these 3 Series have this thing, but if you do, don't forget it. It goes back there.
Okay. Now I'm just going to go back around once more. Double check that everything's tight. Pull this out of here. Lastly, we're going to go ahead and put this uh, sketch shield back up. Which just like how it came apart. I'll just get a couple bolts started here. started and then I'll just go around and snug them all down. And very last is going to be this front skid shield. Put this on. All it does is uh, the front part slides up underneath the bumper and you just line everything up and then these little Phillips head guys again are just uh, not really screws but they're clips you just turn them about a half a turn and they'll lock in place so we'll just go around and do that to all these guys And that's it from underneath. We're going to get the wheels on and lower it down. All right, so we're all done with the uh, control arms and control arm bushings. The car's back on the ground. The wheels are torqued down. Um, so that's pretty much the whole job. Uh, next thing we have to do is get the customer to bring it to an alignment shop. Um, because anytime you change front end components, you have to get an alignment done. And um, we don't have an alignment machine here, so we can't do it for them. Um, but we'll have them go get one done. So anyways, that's... Um, how you replace the lower control arms and bushings on a uh, BMW 3 Series. This was the uh, E46 BMW body style. Um, the E36 is really similar. It's just about the same. Um, but anyways, that's, uh, that's how you do it. Thanks for watching. Remember, check us out on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash APDTY, and subscribe to us here on YouTube. We're always trying to make new videos, and hopefully can help you out. Thanks for watching.